Mr. Speaker, it's an honour and privilege to rise in this House and discuss the important issue of accessibility and how our government is addressing the systemic barriers in our society through the Accessible Canada Act. As a Liberal, I tend to view public policy through the lens of equality of opportunity. Government policy should level the playing field for individuals and groups in society. For instance, whether you're born of a rich family or one that struggles, you should have every opportunity to succeed. In order for this to happen, there needs to be a role for government. Public health care, public education, student loans and grants all contribute to ensure this basic premise is achieved. However, if we look at the unique challenges faced by Canadians with disabilities, the promise of equality of opportunity has fallen short thus far. Mr. Speaker, I know firsthand of these challenges and barriers that hinder full inclusion for Canadians with disabilities. On October 3, 1991, my life changed forever. I was the victim of a random act of gun violence and became a C5 quadriplegic. Overnight, things I never thought twice about became significant challenges in my day-to-day -day life. Finding a home that I could physically enter, accessing caregivers simply to get out of bed in the morning, navigating university, accessing technology, or even just trying to find employment that would accommodate my unique needs. Clearly, and in no uncertain terms, things that I took for granted became more difficult. Mr. Speaker, my case is not unique. 14% of Canadians are living with a disability. That is one in seven. These Canadians face significant and unique challenges solely because they have a disability. A recent study conducted by Stats Canada found that Canadians with disabilities are significantly less likely to be high school or university graduates and are two times more likely or not in the labour force. Canadians with disabilities also face income challenges. Among Canadians with a disability, one in four is low income compared to one in ten for the general population. Mr. Speaker, our government knows that everyone has something important to contribute to their community and to Canada, and this includes those in this country with disabilities. They just need the playing field to be leveled. Our government is following through on our mandate promise made by the Prime Minister to develop and introduce new accessibility legislation. We have developed legislation that is ambitious and that would lead to more people, more consistent experiences of accessibility across Canada. The legislation is founded on six key principles, inherent dignity, equal, equal opportunity, barrier-free government, autonomy, inclusive design and meaningful involvement. And let's be clear, we are taking a whole of government approach to the issue of furthering accessibility in this country. From our national housing strategy to the Elections Act, to embracing visitability, we are enacting legislation that brings real change for Canadians with disabilities. With the tabling of Bill C-81, the Accessible Canada Act, we are showing Canadians that we are serious about creating an accessible Canada. Mr. Speaker, I believe strongly that this initiative, with its combination of encouragement and enforcement, will increase inclusion and fairness in our country. It will set the bar and become a model for organizations all over Canada and across the globe. If passed, this law will also ensure uniformity and fairness in its application. Mr. Speaker, this is the reason why this legislation is receiving such widespread support. With this legislation, we are continuing the march of progress for people with disabilities. It will lead to a more inclusive Canada, a more fair Canada, a place where a quality of opportunity exists for people with disabilities in this country. A Canada where people with disabilities can reach their individual potential 
and are recognized as valued citizens. Thank you very much. Questions and comments? Questions and commentaires? The Honourable Minister.